City Serum Entity basically does is it describes City Serum Entities to the Drupal system. And then because Drupal knows about them and understands how to re interact with them, there's various things you can do in, in Drupal with City Serum Entities. And we're going to look at the rules yeah. use case first, which was the original one Indeed. that I knew about when I started. Um, so you can go to the rules and the sort of config panel of Drupal if you've got rules enabled. Yeah. And you're actually presented with a load of sort of new actions um, all to the sort of city ceremonies. Yeah. So Drupal rules is somewhat like the rules extension these guys have written. You have a, an action that happens and then you can react to that action. You can add conditions and you can take various actions. So here we've got one that's been pre-set up. So when a city CRM event is created, uh, we took the condition out because we were scared it wouldn't work during the demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you're going to create a new entity. So that new entity, do you want to click on the edit screen and yeah, sure. show them what's sort of in there? It's got the organic group. Yeah, so you, it's been specified that the entity type will be a node and you can pass through various sorts of bits of data and if you go into that data selector... Yeah, so from here you could pick any of these and it's yeah. like a little auto-select, but... Yeah, so it knows about all these different bits of information about the Civi Serum event. <coughs> so, um, so what this rule is going to do is when you create a Civi Serum event, it's going to listen to that and it's going to create a Drupal uh, con piece of content which is of a particular type, which I think is OG event, is that correct? Organic group, yeah. Yeah, yeah organic group event, yeah. 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 Um, and it's going to carry across some information, a limited amount of information. And um, should we do, this? Yeah, do sure. that? Okay. So I'm just going to go to the Civi CRM panel and go to add an event. Made a sort of little template earlier, so it's not as uh, long as going through the whole event. <laughs> uh, and on template, uh, test event, and when we cool, so when we hit save and done, this will now create an organic group for that event. So I'll show you that. Um, and organic groups, who knows what an organic group is? Okay, so can you explain? It's a way to, uh, to put users in, uh, in, in certain groups on an uh, automated basis. Yeah, like and Drupal groups. Yes. Drupal groups. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sort of a group system within Drupal where you can have people in a group and then you could have them whenever they content's posted to that group they might subscribe and get that content and things like that. Yeah, so not only have we actually created this organic group here which is sort of named the same as that event, but if we were to register participant it would actually add them to that organic group as well. We could even show that. Yeah, might as well. Might but do you want to just point out the fact that the group is actually linked to the... Oh yeah, sure, of course. So, so if you go to edit that event, we've carried across the title, but we've also got... This is an entity reference field. So that is a field attached to the Drupal event that contains basically the ID, a reference to the Civi Serum entity. And by doing that, you've got the, the connection between the two things. So later on, if we look at something like, well, when we look at our participant view, when we add someone to that Drew, that Civi Serum event, then we are also going to add them to a member of that organic group. And it's the fact that that, that entity reference field is what creates the linkage for us to be able to, to draw that connection. So I will sign somebody up to that event. I'll sign up myself. Might as well. <laughs> um, so, so, participant event, go for the test event, contact, cool, save. And now if I actually go to that 
organic group in Drupal. Um, so here we go. And go to the group. People. Couldn't see that, it's just added me 15 seconds ago. Oh. And you want to very nicely. look yeah. at the rule that does that? Sure, it's, yeah. um. Go. Add participant to OG event. Okay. So our last rule once you created the organic group, and this is a separate one for adding to the event. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think. You, so do you want to just show adding a condition or something like yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, condition. Data comparison probably makes sense. Yeah. And from here, like we've sort of seen before, you can compare any of the of an participant data, I'd say this time. So what was what we took out just for fear it wouldn't actually work is to have it only create an organic group if it's a particular event type. Um, so you can have all sorts of things like that. Um, I think we've done quite a lot of stuff with relationships. When a particular type of relationships created, then add them to an organic group or send them an email. I mean, Rules has got, you know, every Drupal, ex every Drupal module exposes its own sorts of rules, so there's all sorts of things you can do. You can log something to, to the system log, you can send out an email, you can create a new user, and I think in that particular rule it will create a user account if one doesn't exist, and we do that quite a lot. We, as in Fusion, quite often creates user accounts if they don't exist when people do various things. Yes. So yeah, you can see these are the actions. The first action is fetch into my property. To fetch the to look to mm. take the uh, event ID and look up the Drupal node on the basis node. of that, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's one action and then the next action is to create or load the user account so okay. it doesn't exist. And if you go into edit that, I think you'll see that you've got options like, do you want to send them an email and things like that. Activate the account. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Things like that. Mm. And then it adds them into the group. So it's kind of a basic example, and actually that example uh, is in an almost unbroken state ships with the <laughs> The city serum entity in an only yeah. very slightly broken state. <laughs> <laughs> there was like one little change that's making yeah, yeah, one, one of the selections. Yeah, to unbreak, and yeah. then we took out the the criteria and things. Yeah. Um, so you're going to do display suite. Yeah, display suite. So has anyone used sort of DS before the display suite module for Drupal? So as so essentially DS allows you to create templates sort of using the user interface of Drupal so you can edit actually the edit form and when you're sort of looking at the entities as well. So by default that only works with kind of nodes, users and other bits and bobs. Because CBCRM entity exposes those to the as NTA NTA API entities, you can use DS on them. So I've set up a little bit of kind of example. Just so you can see here, so this is the display suite interface. And if you come down, you see that almost all CBCRM entities are actually in here. And from here, we can manage their displays or the edit forms. Actually, sorry, I should have said this before. You can edit and add new CBCRM entities using the normal sort of Drupal entity forms if, you, if you'd like to. Um, Does this work in Drupal 8? So in Drupal 8, so, there has been work done on it, but I don't think it's complete. I think it would be the way they say it. I think, uh, yeah, it's it's still in a could do with a bit more love state. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, but there has been quite substantial work done on it too. So this could be then also because you also have the web form module. But if you have a form here, then you don't yeah. need the method. Yeah. You don't, although it will, so kind of by default, I'll add a sort of event here. You can see it's in quite a, in, in quite a mess, can I say that? I don't know. <laughs> um, 
But because we're using DS, you can then sort of tidy up those forms. So I've done this to the sort of contact form already. So you can now only pick a contact type, first name, middle name, or last name. And I've done that by going to structure and then display suite. And from here, you can manage the form and you can pick which sort of properties you want on the form or hidden. <coughs> you can also apply sort of DS layouts as well down the bottom um, or create film groups if anyone sort of used film groups before. And that's kind of pretty much what you can do with the edit NC form right new. But the kind of really interesting bits is that you can add new sort of Drupal sort of that sort of teaser view modes essentially for any of these entities. So I've added a teaser one by default with a couple sort of properties they're showing. And as a kind of example, I've created a mini view um, that shows those contacts with only those fields sort of present. Um, so if I was to add, let's say, I think of one that I'm definitely going to have on here. <laughs> um, okay, create a date, probably a good one. To the top. And save that. Project. Um, that's now got the created date there. And because this is hooking in with the sort of normal Drupal NC API, you can use template files for this or anything. So really it allows you to create some real custom interfaces for sort of Civi CRM, which although you could try and attempt to do that currently, I don't think it would be quite as flexible maybe. I probably shouldn't say that. But. Uh, <laughs> um, well, yeah. I kind of can't comment to that because, yeah. you know, I don't have the degree of specialty in Drupal that would allow me to, you know, yeah. do. Um, Mark, Hannah, so the, yeah. That's a good question. You know that yeah. so you, you, in display suite you were down affecting the teaser, and you, mm. you did a view to show that. Yes. What's the advantage of doing that as opposed to just doing a view? Sorry, as in what, picking the individual fields, do you mean? Yeah. In a view. Um, you could do that and there wouldn't be much of the, you kind of, achieve the same thing. But I think we saw Drupal as a whole kind of people tend to advise that you do sort of views of entities and then sort of different view modes because you can then have templates for those um, and it's sort of generally a kind of n nicer way to <coughs> sort of display them and allow your sort of front end sort of guys to apply CSS to those or change the markup. It's just like sort of a little bit more flexible really. Um, one thing I probably didn't lead into at the start too is, uh, so I mentioned how I originally started City Serum Entity, that was version 1 and then version 2 Mark, Hannah and I collabor collaborated and Mark is with Square in America. So version 2, I think one of the things, one of the differences is that you can create City Serum Entities from Drupal as well. So it added the crud and like those rules you can you could be creating Drupal entities like we show you do or you could be creating civi ones. Um, Mark is now pretty much the core maintainer of Civi Serum Entity and he's on the verge of putting out version three which just takes a lot of these things a bit mm. further. Um, we're not probably able to show you all of the stuff that Mark's been working on but it's Creating new ones, for example, here. So that's actually sort of created the uh, Civi Serum entity there. In a real kind of odd thing, you can also actually create sort of CCK fields as well yeah. and yeah. attach them to sort of Civi Serum entities. Um, so, that's fine. so I think Mark did a lot of stuff with, because Drupal seems to do a lot more stuff to do with mapping and things like that and a lot more location clever stuff, he was mixing some he was actually putting all the location fields onto the Drupal side, not the Civi side, because then he could just suck in a whole lot of really cool visuals of... So you want to see that, yeah. manage fields, you can actually just add your normal CCK fields, much like you would to any sort of Drupal entity. Yeah, so you what, can... Why would you want to put CCK fields on a Civi CRM entity yeah. rather than have your data in the Civi side? 
Sorry. So it's more if your focus is on displaying things on your Drupal side, it's and you're trying to really build up that Drupal display, really integrate it into your website, but you want to interact with Civi, it's like, it's a different sort of philosophy almost to, you know, it's a much more Drupal developer philosophy. It could be if you wanted to sort of attach media maybe, yeah. and use some sort of media module, something that really isn't actually important to your Civi CRM entities, but <coughs> in terms of displaying those on the site, you might want to your member profiles and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, and I, yeah. I think yeah. something like an event, I mean, Civi CRM really has a very limited and front end interface for registering people for events. So for a Drupal developer, once they actually can say, I can use all my Drupal developer skills to build up this really cool interface for events, and Civi will just handle that part of it. I think as a whole, it is quite. It's bad because you can also. You could have entirely different sort of ways of editing and adding content, which I think you've actually implemented yourself within you at your kind of at your company for hmm? yeah, um, but that was with with web forms and views. Web forms and views, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So not with CSM entity. So yeah. can I ask a quick question here, just to make sure that I'm not lost? So basically, the the display, what's it called, display suit. This yeah, has basically right. nothing to do with entities, right? It's just for like showing what you can then do with the entities, or is it connected to the... It's because there is the City Serum Entity module exposing yeah. City Serum Entities yeah. to Drupal that you can do these extra things with them. Exactly, yes. yeah. Okay. So it becomes a blended Drupal and yeah. City Serum Entity. Mm -hmm. Um, but I could also use them with the regular Drupal functions. Like I could then go into Drupal and actually say create new CVCRM content from the create content menu. Yeah, you can okay. do that too. Just yeah. as an example. But the point is that um, Tom completely customised what you get when you yeah. go to do that by yeah. by choosing which fields he did and didn't want. Yeah, yeah. Um, it also integrates with sort of lots of other modules as well, like the search API, for example, the sort of Drupal search API, so you can index all those in Apache Solar, um, or any other form of kind of search indexing. Um, yeah. But yeah, you could build some quite kind of complex stuff with that. Yeah. Entity queues as well, which is sort of like Node queue, if anyone's used that before. Um, so you can create kind of queues of content, really. Um, Again, really for displaying, so if you wanted to make a slideshow, you could say, show one of these kind of entities that are in this queue. Again, it just, it really kind of opens up so many opportunities to integrate with, you know, a large amount of Drupal modules. Do, I'm kind of feeling like we're leading into VBO as an obvious yeah. step from there. Maybe we can just show the VBO and then we'll go the views after. Okay, sure, well, that makes sense. Yeah, that's nice. So do people know what VBO is? Anyone know? Yeah. You got wise, didn't you? Oh, look, there's someone. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us. Every time. Uh, VBO is a way of uh, bulk updating content in Drupal using the views. So you can have a view that displays uh, all the content on your site. And it allows you to sort of check boxes and to certain pieces of content and bulk unpublish them or bulk change the title to food or bulk delete them. Yeah. So views bulk operations is actions that are available in views. So when you build up a view, you can make a bunch of actions available. This is a view. Um, yep. Yap's going to talk more about creating views after, but this is a view that's already been created. And you can see these checkboxes down the side there. So you can pick these two sort of CBCM mm -hmm. contacts here, and you can actually bulk modify those NC values now. So if you want to do, uh, do sort of do a phone, I can't remember what it was before that, doesn't help, does it? <laughs> oh, no, they're all no. They're all no, yeah. okay. And you can see that that's now actually set do not phone both to... To yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> P <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And Pete uses this... VBO a lot. Um, obviously he's not here to show you what he uses it for, but um, one of the things I've seen him use it for is to get a whole view of contacts and just give them all user accounts at once. It's because that's one of the VBOs that you can use is to create a user account for, for the contacts. And what, what does that do on creating a user account? Can we use uh, 
see that with uh, these real cores. Yeah, so I think depending on how you configure it, you can have it sort of send notifications or different things. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, I couldn't kind of go down to that level. I know that's how he uses it. And he's probably made me write some of it, but you know, I like to put these things out of my brain once I've been through them. Um, but you could also send out emails from there as well, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, also bump delete. <laughs> so regarding the setup, it's basically install new bulk operation, and then you will have. Yes. Yeah, so shall we go back to yeah? Shall we switch to you? Well, <laughs> I do think I follow your line, and yeah, I think you're. No, I was it. just wondering. I mean, of course, if you want CBCM stuff, you need a view of CBCM things. Yeah, that's mm. that is clear. But is it? I mean, having the option to well okay. update all kind of fields is, does this require some additional setup, or do you have to adjust okay. the new bulk operation thing and the use integration you're going to get to soon? Or do you need to? I can show you that. So you need the CBCRM NC module in there um, okay. to be able to do that. And kind of once you've enabled okay. both of those, and if you're editing yeah. your sort of view, uh, you can add the bulk operations field. It needs ah, to okay. understand that it, what it's doing a view of. So it needs to yeah. understand that it's doing a view of CV CRM okay. context. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then basically, it's exposing all the features of that entity, yeah. properties yeah. of that entity, mm. to the, the view. Yeah. 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 Does, does it work? Not just contacts, but like with the same bulk operation on like activities. Events, yeah. Yeah, you Anything just that's exposed to the NC API, basically. So it's a, I'm pretty sure it's almost all of the NC. Yeah, it? pretty much. Um, let's just the one thing you do need to understand is that it is all based off the APIs. So I guess it gives you everything the APIs know about, but it doesn't add as much business layer as through the form, so with the API sometimes things are in the business layer and sometimes they're not, so you know, you do need to try, try things out and see whether, you know, if I create this object through this way, is it actually going to create, so if I create a contribution this way, it probably will create an activity to say that a contribution is created, I'm pretty sure it does, but that's not something you'd necessarily know without no. trying. I think, Joni, because if you, for example, try and add a contact using this sort of route as well, um, so currently you can't add email addresses or telephones because they're separate entities. But now that they're kind of in Drupal, you could edit those forms, sort of bring in, you know, you can add email separately and you can add contacts, so you could try and embed the email add form into the contact add form, you know, it's, it will take some sort of developer work, but you can do a lot with it because you're opening it up to all the sort of standard sort of Drupal hooks, hook edit, hook onto form, NCV alter, and all that kind of stuff. You can do that kind of stuff with work form anyway, so. Yeah. Exactly. Very true. It, very it, true, is, yeah. it right. is an alternate, I mean, web form once again has a lot more baked in logic, you know, that's been coded directly into web form. This is much more the more direct level um, and it is something that yeah people with reasonable it's not something you'd set someone with not much experience at necessarily you'd want yeah. people who are pretty comfortable building sites in Drupal I don't know if that's yeah. fair but I, I would say so yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. yeah but you can create a list of all my activities and go oh look these boom 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 are all gone from scheduled to completed yeah today. And yeah. Pete does. Oh, yeah. Pete has actually built up a whole sort of phone banking thing for one group, and yeah, they go through and assign them to a contacts. Like, there's a view of all the unassigned activities that need to be doing. I think someone fills in a form that says, you know, I am a person, and that there's a Drupal rule that off that I am a person form, it, it creates an activity saying that someone needs to phone this person and just verify they really are. Um, and so you can then go to this view of scheduled activities and then you can using your view bulk operations bulk assign all of those activities to someone to, to phone them all up. Um, so it's kind of an alternative to the survey interface like that. 
to any experience regarding large numbers? I mean, if I want to update 10,000 contacts, would that work, or is it rather a stupid idea? I haven't really got the... I can't really confirm that. It does use the sort of the Drupal... I think Drupal has got a little bit of queuing in there okay. to manage it. But I'm pretty sure you can, actually. Um, because that's one of you the can do it in batches. Of the profiles and CVCRM that yeah. could be an mm. alternative. It will go further things. than... Tro it will, yeah. it, I mean, profiles actually not just got a performance limit, but it's also been hard-coded to only do so many at once, yeah. too. So I think it will yeah. get you a bit further than profiles. But. And in built into views bar corporations, you can set that, those off as sort of batches instead. Um, so here you can enqueue the operation instead of executing it directly, and that will leverage it off to kind of whether it's either the kind of batch process API or whether it's the sort of cron API, but it's either one. <laughs> Um, and that will yeah, now you sort of do it in seconds essentially. So yeah. And just to touch on very briefly, we now use uh, this sort of approach when we do Drupal Commerce integration. That's one of the reasons why there's not really a Drupal Commerce module because we tend to do it through this and using rules and things. And there is on my GitHub some a Drupal Commerce. Uh, a module that provides some extra rules actions for that. Um, I can't. I think it's because to create the possibility to transform a, a commerce line item into a contribution with a membership or with a participant, um, because obviously people can purchase more complex things with commerce. Um, yeah, that was what I had to say about that one. Sorry. Any other sort of questions around that? Or? For commerce using it? Well, I've done it, I've not turned it into a feature. Do people know what features are? Yeah. yeah so, a feature is the idea that you could export that whole thing. Actually, I have turned it into a feature, I just don't think it's 100%. It's another mm -hmm. one of these things that sort of works <laughs> as a feature. <coughs> you know, you install it as a feature and then you tinker and get it working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have managed to get sort of quite a lot of this configuration into features as well, so the display mm -hmm. suite sort of sets up bits and bobs. So if you sort of do know about features, this sort of does work with it pretty well. So Certainly stuff control. like, you know, those modules like OG integration and Civi and roles integration and groups integration that ship with Civi CRM, I would transform those to features right, you know, that to me is the right way that those should be built up as, a, as features and then people can adjust them rather than us trying to constantly negotiate what the right way is to to vary this. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Good stuff. Do you want to do some views and stuff? Yeah. Cool. Anybody in the room who doesn't know any views? <laughs> I will explain a little bit about views, but I got the impression that most of you know quite a bit of views already. One thing you, that this does is it allows from these entity reference the, the connection. I don't know. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, please feel free to ask any questions and, and, and stuff like that. Um, let me see what I'm looking at. So this one was the admin contacts one, so I don't know whether you want to sort of refresh it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll start here and then we will see how far we go. Um, a few, and this is a few where you can build a few, and a few is what we saw earlier, a list of contacts or a list of anything in Drupal. And, um, here we say uh, what kind of fields we are displaying. Uh, here we say what the title is of the view. Um, here uh, the format of how we are displaying it. You could display it as a table, but you could also display it as a list or uh, lots of options. And here we could add filter criteria and sorting. Um, then we have in the middle column, we have some settings about the URL of the view, who can access it, if the view is available in the menu in Drupal. 
uh, some kind of uh, text or, or information which goes above the view, which is the header, some kind of information which goes below the view, which is the footer, uh, and then whether we want <coughs> to include a page or not, and how many items we are displaying. <coughs> And then on the right hand side we have the um, the things which could make things complicated. Um, uh, and then start things getting really complicated. Um, the first thing is the contextual filters, which basically means if you have here, we have the, the URL here as admin slash context. Uh, with a contextual filter you can add anything behind the URL and then it transfers into a filter. Uh, so, for example, you can say admin slash context slash uh, individual, and then if we set up a contextual filter for contact type, that gets transferred to in to filtering on individuals. Uh, that way, you could build views which are linked to other views which are displaying a subset of uh, other things. Um, the thing below is relationships. Um, those are really confusing because in CVCRM we have relationships. Um, and this is not the CVCRM relationships. This means I'm linking, I'm having here a few of CVCRM contacts, and I'm linking here with relationships contacts to something else. Can be CVCRM relationships. Could be a CVCRM relationship, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so for example, I could add here and saying I want to link it to an address of the contact or a uh, relationship and then you have to think about contact A and contact B in CVCRM uh, or you could link it to the Drupal user of that contact so for example if we want to display all users in the system we say okay we link it to the Drupal contact and then uh, if you really want to limit down your selection of contacts to those who only have a Drupal contact ID, you set this to require. If you say, okay, it doesn't really matter um, whether they have a Drupal contact, but I want to link to that, um, you uncheck this. Uh, usually you check this. Um, and uh, somewhere below, <coughs> let me see. Now I get, now I scroll here. Uh, um, now we see here, there is a, a preview as well in the views. Uh, so I've changed something here and it updates the, the, the page immediately. And we only have two contacts here who have a, a Drupal user account. Um, Say for example, if you want to build on this view which lists all the users in the system and you want to build an, an additional view which lists details of the individual user, we can say we will add a new view uh, <coughs> and we say, oh I need to give it a name, let's give it a name of user uh, of uh, let me say we want to show CPCRM contacts. And we say we will create a page and the URL is the, the profile. We don't want to use it. I think that's all good. So if we now say, okay, this is our, uh, and we add some fields here, uh, such as the display name. And if we say we want to have this view preloaded with only the contact ID which is given by the URL, so slash profile slash one or slash profile slash two, we can add here a contextual filter and saying the contact ID if that filters. Here it is. Then we can define what we want to do when uh, the, the ID is not in the URL. Um, you can say, okay, display access denied or display page not found or uh, display something which is a default page then or 
uh, or display all results which are found then. Um, usually I, I check this one. Um, so now when I'm looking at this I don't see anything. But if I add here contextual filter and I say one, I get contact ID one which has the display name default organization. So what we could do now with this page created, we could go back to our previous view, which was admin slash context, and uh, we could for example say if we click on this name we want to go to that view which we just have created. So then we add here, we first add the contact ID to the fields, because we need to know which contact ID we are on. We don't need to uh, display that. And then uh, I usually forget this one, but I'm not thinking about this one. <laughs> uh, it's about uh, the thousand marker. So if someone has the idea of uh, 1200, it doesn't include a comma because that will mix up the URL. And then we make sure we know the ID before we know the display name. And then if we go to display name, we don't link it to the CVCRM contact, but we will do here rewrite results. Uh, and we say output this field as a link. And we say we link it to slash profile slash, and then we can add the contact ID, uh, which is displayed here, which we use here says uh, square brackets and between the square brackets uh, the ID. So we fill in square brackets ID. Um, you could also link this to a, a Drupal web form where you have a Drupal <coughs> web form and then you have a question mark something like CID one is and then you could enter the square brackets. And now we have a view where this links to the next view. So if I click on this, I'm going to the profile page. So if I then go back to the view, did I save it? Probably not. <laughs> now I'm lost. So yeah. <laughs> um, but you get the idea what we are doing. With, um, we could also, uh, if we remove this uh, user uh, relationship, or remove, we could add here filter criteria, where we say we only want to see <coughs> contacts who have a certain uh, contact type, for example. And then we can select here if the contact type should be one of or is not one of the type. So if we say we only want to show the persons, the individuals, we select individuals. Um, and then when we click apply, uh, it only shows the persons in the systems, the individuals from CVC. We could also expose this filter, filter to the users. Uh, so users could use this filter. Uh, we check this button, expose filter, um, and you could say it's a single filter, you could uh, define a label for it, you could define whether the, the filter is required for the user to fill in or not. Um, and you can also define if you want your user to select if it is, is one-off or is not one-off, or when the user could, allow, uh, could select multiple items, uh, and whether to remember which one the user has selected previously. So let's check this one then. And then we got a, a filter list here, so which is default to filter by individual. Uh, but I could also change it as a user to see all households or organizations.
Uh, and with sort, uh, it works in the same way. You select a field from CVCRM, uh, and you select uh, whether you want to sort it on, on uh, alphabet, for example, or descending or ascending. So, for example, if I want to sort it on display name, And again, I could expose the sorting to the user, so the user can change sorting in the view. And now I do think, yeah, they are sorted on alphabetically on the name. <coughs> Questions so far? Yeah. Uh, the has some views integration in the core. Yeah. So how does this play with the uh, core? Um, uh, I do think what I'm showing here is the core CVCRM views integration, but I'm not sure if I'm CV right here. But CVCRM entity does expose some additional entities, um, so where they're missing from the core integration, they quite likely will be presented through the CVCRM entity. Um, it also, yeah, mostly this is core views, it's not specifically the CVCRM entity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, yep. the what, one thing that you get in views with CVCRM entity is that if you were doing it based on a Drupal, you know, when we show that entity reference field, as soon as you've got that field in, then you can start to pull in, so you've got your OG event and you've got your city event and, and views, you can add that as a relationship so it can understand that. Um, and there's also something, a module called EVA, Entity Views Attachment, which allows you to attach views to an entity if there's an entity reference in play, um, which would be yeah, part of this business of building up a much more complex display of an entity. We've got 10 minutes, so it was probably questions. We don't yeah. want to be late for the beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, you could build really powerful things with, I think, the entities module, the rules integrations, uh, <coughs> and you could create really complex stuff as well. So, And I think the difficult thing is to keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a lot of it is about, you know, for Drupal developers, they like Drupal tools. Um, because that's what they're used to working with. Um, so, yeah, these are Drupal tools for it. Yeah, this will make me feel more at home, I was like. This is not this, I know what I'm doing now, this is fine. <laughs> but, but, uh, I've also been using Drupal views for a lot, as if you want a certain person in your organization to do a specific task, over and over again, but you don't want to give them access to CVCRM because then they would have to learn the whole database logic and everything. You can build them a really neat page here and they have a static URL and you can also just assign them a role so only they can access it. And they have their one static page where they can view, I don't know, everything that needs to be happening. And then if you have to, for example, the, the bulk operation thing, they can have a list of activities like call the people and then they just update it when they have done it. And it can be very much easier than giving them a whole CVCM training and then, you know, they have to understand so much more. It's just one example and I'm not a Drupal developer and in the beginning it's very, it's kind of hard, you have this peak you have to get over to understand this yeah, because yeah. there's so many columns and stuff. But once you did that, it's really great and I would also recommend you to get the CVCM cookbook. We have two or three really great examples how you could use the views and it's explained step by step and that helped me a lot. And I think, as you said, you, you can also redirect people through to forms. Yeah. We've been doing quite a bit of stuff recently where you know you have pretty much all the CVCRM in and out going on in forms and views, yeah. and, and you let people interact with it in a very limited way. So your users have a very simplified interface and something that's actually, you know, Drupal developers can, you know, can do that with CVCRM. Sure. There's kind of uh, there are other modules as well, which I think probably without a load of tweaking probably could start to work. So I've started testing this, and it looks like it's almost there. Yeah. It's entity path also, so then you can actually start creating 
like paths for the ECB entities. So yeah, rather than just it being you know, contact forward slash the ID, you could possibly use display name and things like that. So I think there's a there's a lot of places sort of grow as well. Low, yeah. we could do a a lot with it. <laughs> um, it just needs people yeah. to get behind it. You know. I think you could do things like start to get taxonomies linking you know, into yeah. the you know linking those entities as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do that kind of stuff in views, but you have to add code to put it out and then have it, you know, mm. so that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it, yeah, we, as far as I understand the use case that Mark Hanna built up a lot of work around recently was a very sophisticated PCP <coughs> platform, um, which, which really without pe without ever touching a contribution page um, allowed people to be registering for s oh, cr you know doing contribution pages and creating PCPs off them and I think it was a very visual kind of experience um, that he built up use and so he's recently put stuff in which we haven't really experimented with around price sets through Drupal through, through the entity side of it, so I guess that's exposing a lot more. That's actually a little bit beyond. I mean, the original City Serum entity was very cruddy, and I think he started to put some more layers of um, niceness on top to meet some of these use cases. Mm. Um. Possible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any, any more questions from anyone? No, we can always cool. Should we direct everyone to the pub then? <laughs> <laughs>